Hi, my name is Alaton Tari Koka and I'm an under 40 CEO. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here and with young men and women taking the lead. Some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Olauton Tauri Koka is a passionate entrepreneur with over 14 years experience in incubating and growing early stage businesses. His professional background spans multiple sectors, including oil and gas, publishing, advertising, technology, and real estate. Driven by a continual search for excellence and a passionate desire and drive to solve problems and impact people across many divides, Olauton Tauri Koka exemplifies what it means to be a young African professional and entrepreneur on a journey of conceiving ideas, creating solutions, and delivering change that gives greater meaning to lives. Olauton is the founder and CEO at AfroTickets. All right, welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Olauton. Thank you for having me. All right, Olauton, um, you attended the University of Manchester, yeah. um, but not much has been recorded about your early childhood growing up, I believe, in Nigeria. Mm. Could you please just um, tell us a little bit about your childhood? Okay, um, that's actually very true. Nobody actually really talks about pre, <laughs> pre Nigeria, but um, I went to primary school in Nigeria. I did, um, I went to Corona, Victoria Island. Um, so I was quite lucky to go to a very good primary school. Um, but I didn't actually finish primary school in Nigeria. I left at the age of eight. My parents thought that uh, I might be better suited for school in the UK. So they sent me to. Um, uh, Junior Kings, Kings Canterbury. Um, okay. Yeah, Kings Canterbury. So I did my uh, GCSEs and A levels in the UK from there. So I did Junior Kings and Senior Kings. Um, yeah, so it was a great experience. But I left, I think I left a bit too early, in my opinion. No. <laughs> All right, biochemistry yes. and biotechnology. Yeah. How and why? <laughs> well, I think I've always been drawn to sciences. Um, I remember at a very young age, I used to be obsessed with Discovery Channel. So, you know, sciences, uh, technology, from, a, you know, I used to watch Discovery Channel from, for hours, um, literally nonstop. And um, I don't know, I just, go, I just love the, you know, the, the human body. I love what, um, you know, we've been able to achieve with technology and where the future is going. So. Um, I think that um, it was just a, a passion that came, I, I really don't know where it came from. Um, National Geographic as well, I used to read the magazines. Um, so when I got to secondary school, should I say public school in the UK, those were the areas that I excelled in. Um, so biology, chemistry um, especially, and it was a natural fit. I, I think it was, it was kind of a, a, a slightly basic, um, thought process, I was like, I'm good at biology, I'm good at chemistry, so let's just combine it. That was kind of what my biochemistry. biochemistry. <laughs> but then obviously, I, you know, thinking about it more deeply, I felt that that was where um, obviously my passion really was, and I felt that I could really excel in. Amazing. Yeah. So biochemistry, biology, physics, yeah. uh, chemistry. Yeah. But then at some point, um, you actually did publish a magazine. Yes. Um, I believe the magazine was called What's New. What's New Magazine. Um, but then again, before we you know, do a deep dive into your core business now, which is Afro Tickets. Can you please tell me why um, did you set up a co-working space, Cranium One? Cranium One. Um, well, I had a space which um, was sort of underutilized. I had a very big office. Um, at one point, I had 30 people working out of that same office. But then, um, I think at a time, we had to downsize. And so I had so much excess capacity that it was, at one point it was maybe five of us, four to five of us in the office and I, and I mean, I'm, I'm a businessman, I saw the opportunity. Um, I would get friends coming to my space and saying, say things like, oh, can, I, can they rent a you know, desk or a, a cubicle? Um, so after I had that about four or five times, I thought, okay, there's obviously an opportunity here to probably monetize and start um, charging people for this. And at the time, I didn't know what co-working spaces were. Um, I just thought, okay, I could rent office space out, I could, you know, maybe carve up 
um, small cubicles, and obviously, you know, the, you know, the um, amount I could charge would be f by far much in, in, in excess. By the time I get to the aggregate amount, it would be much more than what I was paying in rent. Because I know the difficulties people go through finding office space, even till now. Um, you're a young guy, you have a good idea, you don't have too much money, you can't pay for one year, two years in rent. It just, it just doesn't make you know, financial sense. So my goal was how can I, you know, how can I um, assist these entrepreneurs to make that onboarding process, starting a business a lot easier because I know what I went through. When I started in 2003, there was no, no co-working spaces. Cranium One is indeed one of the premier shared workspace platforms for entrepreneurs and early stage businesses in the country. And beyond publishing What's New magazine and the best of everything, which were arguably the catalyst for the now burgeoning lifestyle and hospitality movement in the country, he is also the founder of Frontline Media Advertising Agency, involved in creative inception, strategy, and media buying for some of the largest companies in the country. However, his firm, AfriTickets, continues to be one of the most utilized ticketing platforms in Nigeria. All right, so scientists, publisher, you know, landlord, <laughs> a businessman. Yeah. Um, but today you're the CEO of AfriTickets. Yes. Um, what problem was AfriTickets designed to solve? When I used to publish um, What's New magazine, I worked um, on many different events. We used to cover the events. And I just noticed that they lacked key services. And one in particular was ticketing. None of these guys had access to um, um, a platform that allowed people to purchase tickets in advance. Everything was bought on the day, it was very disorganized. I mean, I worked on one of the biggest, till, still to today, the biggest um, event in, on the continent, which was the This Day, um, this day Festival. Yeah, that I, I don't know if you, yeah, yes. that was huge, big. huge. Yeah. We had all the major artists who are probably the largest artists in the world, now Beyonce, Jay-Z. Um, on one stage, um, and they had no, there was no um, organized way of, of, of people actually purchasing tickets. Everybody had to buy them at, you know, different outlets, you know, like chicken, at the time, I think it was maybe a TFC, um, and buy at the gate. And obviously, you know, security concerns, issues, um, you know, I just felt that this was an industry that had amazing potential, but that was just very disorganized. So, so what I did, I just decided to go out on my own. So I registered the domain afritickets.com because obviously I was looking at a global platform. I felt that something, if you're going to do anything, do it big. Um, and my goal was always to go across Africa. So what I did is I got in touch with some, um, some developers um, across the world. I spoke to some of the UK, I just, you know, finding out how to, I wanted to learn how to, to build a ticketing platform. So I spoke to tickets.com, I spoke to Ticketmaster, I spoke to different people. Um, and I found the best, the best developer I could for the, what I could afford at the time. I mean, this was still uh, very early days. And um, within five to six months, I had a working, working prototype. And I launched, I launched it um, on, I think it was December 15th just in time, I, it couldn't have worked out any better, just in time for the Christmas, you know, Christmas buzz. And literally we were selling next, the next day. Wow. So yeah, it was, it was a whirlwind experience. I think that was 2011, okay. December 2011. Okay. Yeah. All right, and since you launched, I'm sure uh, there are other people who have come into the market. Oh, absolutely, yeah. What distinguishes you from your competition? Um, in everything I, I do and I associate myself with, I, um, I like to bring in, um, excellence so from the customer service to the to the platform to the everything down to our um, our tech you know the, the user experience um, we pride ourselves on being an excellent platform in every sense of the word all right so you spoke about a working prototype yeah at a time I'm sure over time the technology has changed and you've probably refined oh, yeah. um, your platform over time what are those like two key changes you've made to your platform okay. since launch? One, yeah. one is payments. Um, when we first started out, we didn't have um, you know, very reliable payment systems. So you'd have to go through a cumbersome process to, make, uh, to actually get a ticket. You'd have to put in different codes. You'd have, to, um, you know, you'd have to put in your PIN numbers. And you'd have to, it literally was a four step, four to five step process just for payments alone. 
Um, but now we have um, a lot more reliable payment providers. We've got Paystack, we've got Rave. Um, so that, for me, has changed um, has changed the whole process completely. And also, the platform is a lot more uh, a lot more robust. Um, it's a lot more reliable. The user experience has completely changed. We've raised the bar. We're now an international company. All right. So talking um, technology and talking yeah. generally and mm -hmm. then globally, what sort of innovation do you anticipate? You know, would happen in the next, say, five years? Oh wow! Oh, there's going to be so much. Mm -hmm. I think. For me, I think the main, um, the major breakthroughs and the major changes is going to be in artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and in blockchain. The, the rest of the world have already started developing and investing heavily in artificial intelligence um, and machine learning. So you're going to see a lot more robotics um, uh, using artificial intelligence for manufacturing. Um, you're going to see blockchain technology used in everything because obviously it's, it's a it's a ledger that allows um, security, you know, more secure systems. So I think for me, I, I just see um, artificial intelligence in all facets of, you know, all facets of business. Amazing. So we're talking about investing. Um, it says online you're an angel investor. Mm. What are your favorite industries to, to invest in? Um, I like to invest in things that I understand. I think, as, I mean, the same, um, uh, sort of mindset that Warren Buffett had. He doesn't invest in anything outside of his purview, which is very smart. So my experience obviously in science, um, technology, and obviously in media um, is where I focus, you know, I focus my energy in. So I've focused in um, advertising, focused in, um, I've invested in, um, you know, different technology companies. As long as it's a tech uh, leverage business, I feel that I can, I can bring my sort of like my expertise and my knowledge base to, to good use. Okay, so tell me about your um, mentorship scheme. That's what I'll call it because yeah. it says online that you do mentor um, yeah. business people. Yeah, so my mentorship, what I've done in, in the mentorship space is sort of informal. Um, I have lots of people who've obviously come through the Cranium One, um, you know, environment, you know, and I just take on the, the informal role of uh, a mentor. I, I look at their businesses. Obviously, I've been running my business for, running various businesses for about 16 years plus. So I've seen, I've seen it all. I've been through it all. I've gone through the struggles. I've gone through the pain. And I've also seen the high points. So I can give them, you know, um, you know, I have a wealth of experience to sort of, you know, pass on to them. All right, then. So tell me, what's the current business structure at um, AfriTicket? Um, the business structure in terms of the business model or yes, the, the, organogram. Other, yeah. the organogram. Okay, so um, I'm the founder, I'm a sole founder. Mm -hmm. um, I have um, different people from technology to marketing to sales to customer service. Obviously we're a customer facing business, so we have to be very strong in um, how we deal with customer issues and resolution, you know, resolution. So, um, it's a pretty flat, flat, flat structure. All right. Yeah. So uh, I know earlier on off camera, we we're just talking about all of the challenges that uh, come with doing business oh, in wow. Nigeria. Yeah. But what are those challenges that you've um, encountered yeah. and had to overcome that have uh, and lent to the strides that you've made so far? Um, challenges, I could write a book about them. <laughs> Uh, we experience challenges every day. Just by running your business in this country, you're already fighting against the elements. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's power issues, there's uh, technology issues. I mean, one of the main issues for me is a lack of, um, of accessible talent. Um, it's been a struggle for me, for example, to find strong tech, tech people. Um, so we've had to be very innovative about, about how, we, how we run our tech, you know, the tech um, for our business. So initially, I, had, I used to outsource um, our development to India, to the UK, but luckily, the capacity has grown tremendously since um, Andela mm -hmm. and other, um, other platforms have come, um, come into the country. So now there's a lot more talent around, accessible talent. So um, with challenges comes, you know, a lot of learning. Absolutely, you know? yeah. So what are those critical you know, lessons that you've learned in business mm. and can share on running a business to profitability? You have to keep your integrity. I mean, it's very easy to cut corners and to, um, to look for the quick, the quick buck, the quick money. But then what you find is that those, 
those never last. Those, the benefits from those sort of things never last. Also, I feel that you need to be very careful about the kind of industry you go into and the timing of, of that business because you know, I've learned the hard way that you know, not every business is right for that time. So, I mean, I'm a perfect example. I, I started you know, with, um, you know, I, I was looking at uh, a tech, tech um, solution for the advertising industry. I was way, way ahead of my time. This was in 2006, where, um, you know, technology was still at its infancy in that, in that, in that space in Nigeria. Across the world, it was pretty, pretty wide, widespread and, you know, widely available. But in Nigeria, we just, we pushed it, pushed it, but the market just didn't understand it. Literally, four years later, it's now something you see everywhere. All right, so let's talk investment. What, how, where would you advise a young man, a young businessman, to secure his funds at the moment? I'd say, first of all, invest in yourself. Ultimately, you are the greatest investment that you can make. So constantly, you have to improve yourself. You know, attend courses, um, online and offline if you can. Mm. Um, just l look at the trends, look at where, try and forecast where the world is going in five to 10 years. And that's, if you have an interest in that area, focus your energy on that. So invest in yourself. Mm. Um, but then look at, obviously, technology. The, I, I think the top five, um, you know, largest companies in the world now are technology, in you know, the technology company. I think top seven out of, the, you know, out of 10 uh, a technology company. So it shows you where the world is going. I can tell you in the next five years, it's all 10 are going to be technology-based companies. So um, if you can focus your energy and your investments in um, technology, uh, whether it's for yourself learning about artificial intelligence, whether, how to code, um, you know, um, I would say focus in that. And, uh, and going back to investing in yourself, you are, like I said, the greatest investment that you can ever invest in. So look at how you can project yourself in, a, in the best light. Um, how can you speak in public? How can you work on your confidence so you can walk into any environment, any meeting, speak to anybody, walk up to the CEO of any company and, you know, and shake his hand and, and sell him, sell yourself to them. For me, that is one of the greatest um, skills that anybody can have. For a gentleman who has spent well over a decade, building and investing in businesses in Nigeria, surviving and thriving in what could be deemed a difficult terrain must mean he has mastered riding the turbulent economic tides. So you've done business in Nigeria now for about 16 years, 16, I believe. Yeah, roughly 16 years. Well, what would you say makes the Nigerian business landscape unique? I think Nigeria has so many problems and um, in any, in, with every problem there's a solution. So I think that's what draw, you know, you know, drew me to Nigeria. I, I saw the wealth of, of um, issues, which are all fixable, by the way. Everything from the power to, our, to uh, our water to even our government. I think those are, uh, are problems that can be, can be solved because the rest of the world ha had these problems years ago. Um, the rest of the world had you know, um, instability in, in the political climate. You know, um, they had problems with um, power, and they had problems in every aspect of, of, of what we're going through now. But they managed to, through innovation and through uh, cohesive, um, you know, um, just coming together, they were able to solve those problems. So for me, Nigeria is a wealth of, of opportunities. Um, we have, you know, the youngest population, um, youth population in the world. We have uh, 190 million people, we have arable land, we have so many issues um, that can be solved. So as an entrepreneur in the world, I don't know why you'd be anywhere else. All right, man. So how would you say travel and interacting with different cultures have helped you know, add value to you and shaped your, your person? It's, it's pretty invaluable. I think once, once you can get into the mind of a different culture, um, you know, you learn something new, you change your perspective. And every time you change your perspective, you learn, you, you develop, you advance in, in this, in a, in a, in, um, you know, in some way. All right, so you've received a lot of nods and recognition for your work. What, what do these um, nods, recognition, accolades, what do they mean to you? Um, I guess it gives you a sense of achievement, really, but I don't really pay attention to accolades. I mean, I just do the work. 
I think that's the most important thing. I make sure my clients are happy. And people always come up to me and tell me, oh, wow, you know, you, you started after tickets. But I just, I don't see it as a big deal. Maybe I should, but I, I feel that um, we're not even 10% of where we intend to be. So when I reach that point, maybe at that point, where we even get 50% of where we're trying to get to, then I can start feeling happy and a bit more. But like they say, celebrate every little win. Um, I guess it gives you a bit of motivation and that extra, you know, few hours to just push through that problem, you know. All right. So how would you describe your leadership style? Um, I have an open door policy. So if there's ever any issue, you can walk into my office. Um, everybody calls um, each other by first name. So like I said, we'd like to run a pretty open and, and lean uh, and laid back structure. But at the same time, I expect everybody to, to um, bring their best foot, put their best foot forward at all times. You have to give me excellence. I, I want only a 18 players. All right, for someone who demands excellence, you probably put forward a lot of excellent work as well. I try to. Um, I try to. Yes, you do try to, but correct me um, if I'm wrong, you must have failed even as a leader in the past, if you have. Absolutely. Tell me about some of your failings. You know, I, I've matured a lot over the years. I mean, I started out when I was 23. So um, I've made a lot of mistakes in terms of the people I hired, for example, and the people I fired. So one thing I've learned is that I've never hired out of desperation. Um, I've hired people who have gone on to do things down the line which I didn't agree with. We've had to let them go. Um, I've let people go who maybe should have stayed. Uh, I've made some business decisions. I've gone too quickly into a particular um, new product line or I've um, Maybe I haven't, I haven't um, you know, prepared well enough for a particular you know, pitch or something like that. But each time that happens, I look, I, I do a post, um, I, I, I like to review everything I do. I like to look back. At the end of each day, I, I think about um, how the day has gone, what could I have done better, uh, what went badly, what went well. And I just reflect and I you know, try and implement that in, my, in, this, you know, in subsequent days. So. Oh. So constant learning process. Amazing. All right, so what are those key skill sets that a CEO needs to acquire mm. to run a business to profitability? Profitability. Oh, you have to have, uh, you, have to, you have to be very personable. Mm. You have to be confident um, because you're gonna meet people, you're gonna meet fellow CEOs, you're gonna meet people who you need things from. Mm. Um, so you have to be very personable. You have to be able to approachable. Um, and you have, to be, you have to know where you're going. All right, so tell me, what values are important to you and your firm? Um, integrity. For me, I, I, I don't, it's, not, it's non-negotiable. I need integrity from every one of my staff because we're gonna be you know, divulging lots of um, you know, industry secrets. You know, what is our secret source? And I need to be able to trust you and I need to make sure that you have the best interests of the company at heart at all times. Um, so I, 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 it's non-negotiable for me. Also, I, I, hard work. Um, you have to be a hard worker because there are going to be times when uh, we have to put in extra hours. We have to do 15 hours. We have to come in on the weekends. And if you're not a hard worker, you can't excel because your competition, your, your, everybody around you is going to be working you know, people, you need to put in that extra work to reap the benefits. What's the biggest letdown that you've experienced in your business so far, or generally in business? Oh, I mean, I've experienced a lot of letdowns, but I think one of the main ones was when I had to shut down my publishing company. Um, I had a magazine, like you said, called What's New, and it just wasn't doing, it just wasn't doing well. Um, every month we had to struggle to make ends, ends meet. I had to let my staff go. So for me, shutting down the business was, um, it felt like a failure. Um, I felt like I let my, my team down because I tried everything to make it work. But, you know, I just, it was very painful at the time, but I felt like, or well, now I feel like it was a learning experience that has, you know, prepared me for, for business. I think every successful entrepreneur should have at least one or two failures. You know, you have to understand what disappointment is. You have to know what not to do in subsequent businesses. Olauto has mastered confidence and being personable as a key skill to ensure success as a chief executive 
in these parts. But how does this success translate to his lifestyle choices? I must find out. So I have a few quick fire questions for sure. you. What do you love to eat? I love fried rice and I love plantain, soft plantain. All right, so um, what's your fashion style? Fashion style, I'll say, is cool casual. What are your favorite brands to wear? I love Nike, Adidas in particular. Um, I like Louis Vuitton. I love diesel mm. jeans. Mm. Yeah, those are my favorite brands. All right, so what other CEOs do you look up to? Um, I look up to CEOs like, um, you know, Tony Lumulu, um, who, who's created a Pan-African business, for example, Wale Tinubu, um, who started out very, very young, has created a, a behemoth of an oil, oil, oil company, um, Fola Adjola, who was one of the pioneering banking CEOs in the country. Um, I mean, those are for me, um, Michael Deniger, who's built one of the largest telecom businesses, indigenous telecom businesses in the country. Um, those, those are the key guys I look up to. All right, so what's your favorite car to drive? Mercedes. What's your favorite travel destination? I love warm weather, I love sand, I love the sea, so maybe Hawaii, um, yeah. And I love, I mean, I enjoy Europe as well, but you know, the Met, you know, um, like Spain, Barcelona as well. All right, what's your favorite book of all time? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm by uh, Richard Kiyosaki. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure you've read Kiyosaki, that. Kiyosaki, yes. Yeah, Kiyosaki, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. So what book are you reading right now? Um, I'm reading two books of, uh, right now. I'm reading um, How to Invest in Stocks and um, The Tribe of Mentors by Tim Ferriss. The Tribe of Mentors. Mentors. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So lastly, I'd like to know, Alauta, what makes you happy? What makes me happy? Um, I think what makes me happy is seeing other people happy. Right, I, I'm looking at, it, I love impacting other people's lives in a positive way. So I think that is part of the reason why I, I took uh, my life into my own hands and I started running my own business because I could see the direct impact in people's lives. Um, so making people happy, making, um, especially children, right? Because obviously children, um, you know, they're at a very early stage, a very, you know, um, formative, formative years, right? And you, it's so easy to go the wrong way. So if you can guide that child in the right path, right? If you can mentor that, that child in the right way, then, I mean, they can literally be anything in the world. So I, so I love mentoring. I love just impacting people in a positive way. All right, thank you for coming thank on Under so 40 much. CEOs. Cheers. Hi, my name is Alauta Ontario Coker, and you too can be an Under 40 CEO.